tolerate a class being excluded from employment in, in most other fields. The world is comprised of men and women, so I, I want to see that. There is money being left on the table by undervaluing the female audience. It's like, what are we doing? There's a million other people who are not 14 or male who want to see films. It's not about cancelling out the men or anything like that. It's just about levelling up the playing field. And it can't be the, the fad or the hot topic of 2015. And this can't just be talk. Taking a look at directors and producers and women-led projects right now, what right now in 2015 is the current temperature? What would you gauge it at uh, for women in entertainment? The numbers have plateaued, you know, over the last 15 years have not changed. The evidence is so clear that a um, man and a woman coming out of film school, they each have made an independent feature that's done well at Sundance. The man will get a chance to direct a blockbuster in Hollywood and 99 times out of 100, the woman won't. It's not that Hollywood is the only sexist place. Silicon Valley started from zero, you know, 20 years ago, and they're still only at 17%. What has your research shown you? What's the STEM issue here that is causing this, um, this gender bias? <sighs> Easy question. Yeah, I mean, the, the STEM issue, I guess, is a combination of historical patterns uh, that are just kind of reinforced and reinforced and reinforced. It really comes down to power. I think that people greenlight movies that they want to see. And if the top echelons are occupied by white men, I think that you're going to see more movies about white men. And when we're left out, it means we're not valued. It means our stories don't count. And really, that is not a great message to be sending to our young boys and girls. What is the biggest misconception about women in the arts? <sighs> that women don't go to the movies. That female content isn't profitable. That there's some secret language that we don't know or something that's keeping us out of like being able to be a director. Oh that you have to tailor a market to teenage boys. Get into a position that we could shoot you from the front. That women can't direct big budget movies. And the one which I think is the hardest one is the valuing of female storytelling. All right, can we get it to the left, one to the left? And you know, myths are, are that, they're deeply held uh, belief systems that bear no relationship to reality. Women are earning more college degrees. We're over half of the labor force. The predictions are by 2028 that women will actually be out earning men. And the fact that women in North America control over two thirds of consumer wealth, we have an economic argument to make. Women are making money, like Jennifer Lawrence movies and Scarlett Johansson with that movie Lucy, like Charlize in Mad Max and Melissa McCarthy is just doing amazing. And you've got all these women who are making it actual fact that they make money, that we make money. From that position of a programmer and an educator, what have you learned? What do women do when they get the opportunity? Well, for one thing, they do anything and everything. Uh, as Catherine Bigelow with The Hurt Locker clearly demonstrates, as women who've made horror films, as you know, documentaries about all kinds of subjects. There is a natural ability to multitask see a lot of things all at once, see multiple nuance in situations, understand a room. We're very complex creatures and there's so much to tell. It's fascinating to watch, it's entertaining. Oh, we are you. really not there yet. Yeah. Yeah. Where is the most progress happening? Well, I think we're in, ex in an exciting time period right now. We are seeing more emphasis on mentorship and sponsorship. It's coming from underneath. It's coming from grassroots activism on the part of women who are creating projects. Because of social media, uh, women have come out and have engaged um, at a higher level. All right, and action. Women are taking a stronger stand on pay and equality of pay and equality of like billing. Just because it's a guy and it's a girl, why should his name go first? 
we're a strong female company with, with women in, in powerful positions. That's where I feel like the shift is. I think for, you know, for the generation that was ahead of me and that did it for me, and I think the generation to come, it's our job. It's our job as women. It's very important and it's a duty of ours.